I'm really excited, especially about this first one. Um, like you said, I do think it's an elimination game. I think it's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to tell me a lot about these teams going forward, especially Missouri coming off the bye week. Uh, Missouri's getting two points on the road versus Texas A&M. The over-under here is 48.5 points. I'm going to throw out some statistics for you guys. Missouri is averaging 31.7 points per game, which is 40th in the country. They're averaging 466.7 yards, which is 19th in the country. And, guys, that tells me they're not really finishing drives. And when we get into uh, red zone scoring, that is the case. They're only scoring on 92.31%, but that's 36 right now. Obviously, that will go down. Like, if that's what they did the whole year, that'd be number one in the country. I don't think it's gonna end, they're going to end up there. Uh, yards per rush on offense, 25th in the country. Yards per rushing um, as a total in the game, it's they're 15th in the country. Uh, Yards per pass on offense, 6.9 yards per pass, which is 76 in the country. So, honestly, they're not really getting the ball down the field. And then yards per game passing, 44th in the country with 251 yards per game passing. On the defensive side of the ball, they are 16th, giving up 16 points per game. They only give up 263.7 yards per game, which is 11th. Uh, they give up 4.6 yards per play, which is 29th, so they're pretty good at there as well. Rushing yards per play, 3.3, which is 24th in the country. Rushing yards a game, 103rd, or 103 yards, which is 19th in the country. Opponent yards per pass, 6.8, which is 52nd in the country. And opponent yards per game passing given up is 160.7, which is 17th in the country. And then Texas A&M on offense, they average 23.3 points per game, which is 78th in the country. Yards per play, 5.2, which is 79th in the country. Red zone scoring, they have been perfect in the red zone this year. So they're very good in the red zone. They're the tied for first in the country there on offense. And then they're averaging 4.7 yards per carry, which is 45th in the country. Um, um, Passing-wise, they're giving our – they're having 6.3 yards per pass, which is 98th in the country, which is not good. And then yards per game passing 115th in the country. So obviously they like to butter their bread running the ball. They not a very good passing team defensive wise, 20 points per game, given up 32nd in the country yards per game, given up 343.8 47th in the country yards per play, given up 5.4, which is 58th in the country. Uh, yards per pass, given up 6.8 54th in the country uh, and sack percentage, they're only getting to the quarterback 5.52% of snaps, which is out of 100 dropbacks, you're only getting there five times at 66. Honestly, this defense, like I said last week versus Arkansas, has not been anywhere near what I thought they were going to be on the year, guys. I thought they were going to be much better than this on the year. Uh, but this game is very interesting to me. How do you see it, Tyler? Well, uh, I've been saying this for weeks. I think Texas A&M is going to beat Missouri. Missouri's kind of due for that loss. And to be honest with you, Missouri just hasn't been what they what what I've heard they're supposed to be, in which there's gonna be a legit top ten team and a playoff team. They haven't been a playoff team all year. I'm sorry. I mean, their first two weeks they played an FCS school in Buffalo. Okay, cool. Buffalo beat NIU, who beat obviously Notre Dame, but they, again. That those two wins are not impressive. They didn't impress anybody when they barely beat Boston College. The, I will say this, though. Castellanos uh, only had, I think, 30 yards rushing, and the next guy next to him had about 15. So they shut down the run against Boston College. And then, obviously, Vandy. They they had to struggle themselves to win that game. They sh honestly shouldn't have won that game. Vandy found every way possible to lose that game. I like Texas A&M here. Now, here's the thing. I, I might get heat for this, but I this is where I think Wigman actually would, would benefit Texas A&M a little bit more through the air. Missouri's secondary, I have yet to really, to be honest, I have yet to really see them be tested. This would be a good test. Um, now, Marcel Reed, he's he's been okay. I, I'm not going to lie and say he's been amazing. He, he's been okay. Um, he did just enough, I would say, against Arkansas, maybe uh, give him credit for that last drive, but that was really uh, their offensive line pushing through, and they finally were able to get some gaps in the rush game, and then Le'Veon Moss was able to do most of that dirty work there. But this Texas A&M front seven is elite. I mean, it's ridiculous. This defensive line is too deep at every position. 
uh, Scorton, uh, Scorton, I mean, he's had, you know, he hasn't had the season, the breakout season that a lot of people said he was going to have or as good as that, but still he had a couple big sacks in this game. I think he actually forced the game winning fumble too, as well as York, a really good middle linebacker. I like Texas A&M here. Um, I think this is a lower, well, I think this is a lower scoring game because Texas A&M's offense really isn't that good. If we're just being honest here, they're more of a rush team. Missouri can limit the rush, can uh, limit Texas A&M through the ground. The problem is, I think Texas A&M is going to be a little bit too much. This is what they do. They this is exactly how the Arkansas game went. They wore out Arkansas in the fourth quarter. That's kind of what I feel. I think it's going to be a kind of a snoozer early on, um, and Texas A&M comes away with like a twenty-four to seventeen type deal at home in College Station. So I'll take the under, but give me the Aggies at home to pull, I guess, the upset. Like I said, always trust Tyler on these because I'm going, the, but I'm going the opposite. Uh, I'm going to take Missouri because I think t- like on a down to down basis, they're actually not great versus the pass. They're like, we, like you said, they're much better versus the run. The problem is I don't think Marcel Reed and especially the weapons on Texas A&M are going to be able to hit them deep. And if you watch Missouri's defense versus like, like you said, Boston College and Vanderbilt, they were able to exploit it with the deep pass. I don't, I'm not going to be able to see that with Texas AM because I don't think Texas AM has the weapons nor the quarterback to do that. I do think they'll have some success running the ball because Colin Klein, that's what he does. He knows how to run the football, he knows how to design schemes, get angles in the um, running game to uh, create holes for Le'Veon Moss and Amari Daniels and those guys and Marcel Reed as well. So I think they'll have some success. I just think. Like I said, not enough explosive plays are going to be generated here. I think Missouri will be able to create some explosive plays through the air with their wide receivers because that is the weakness of Texas A&M's team. They're better versus the run than the pass. So I think Brady Cook will have some success here. I'm going to take Missouri. I agree with you. I think it's a low-scoring game. I'm taking Missouri 23-20. So we're both on the under here, just on opposite sides. I'll take the two points. He's going to take Texas A&M. But I think it's a really good game. I expect low scoring. I'd be shocked if this turned into a shootout. I really would be yeah. because I just think both defenses all around are solid. And then I don't really love either quarterback here. Well, I will say this about Texas a and wide receivers. They have an underrated wide receiving core that I really just haven't needed to throw the ball as much or had the right not to down – Marcel Reed, but I mean, he missed a lot of throws in that Arkansas game. I mean, that game could have potentially been a blowout and he missed a couple of those throws, maybe misread some of those uh, throws as well. But Cyrus Allen's really, really good. Noah Thomas, I like him. He's starting, they started to get a groove on late into that game. But where is Moose Muhammad? This was, this is Texas A&M's, or this who, who I thought was Texas A&M's most talented wide receiver. Where in the world is he? I see him pop in every now and then, and then when he's on the field, oh, oh, breaking news that the pass game starts to, to you know, to, to uh, connect. That's just what happened in the fourth quarter. They, it just makes no sense. Why is Moose Mahabin not not seeing the field? I hope he's able to see the field in this game because he's a very, very talented and skilled wide receiver. You can put him just about anywhere. So I, I think they can actually uh, – I actually like this wide receiving core, and by far this is the best wide receiving core – Missouri would play up to this point. Yeah, I agree with that. They're definitely the best. Yeah, I, I, it's funny you said that because I said going into the season, I thought he was their best wide receiver, and he's kind of gone AWOL with this team so far. Weird. He hasn't really been – yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, he's definitely not his dad up to this point. His dad was a very, very <laughs> oh, good Oh, trust wide me, I know. Yeah, being a Panthers fan, when those were the good times. Um, 